joined on the set with our very first guest tonight and her name is Claire Fultz and she has been running headstrong in the arms of Jesus since April the 2nd 1980 and she's been a woman going after God's own heart please give a warm Atlanta live welcome to Mrs. Claire Fultz Hi. Thank you. hey it's so good you're here tonight thank you it's great to be with you yes you know I um, as we were in the green room and you were right. telling you were going to share your testimony right. tonight and so basically you're going to be sharing with us how you have had the full parenting experience I really have <laughs> I really have wow that, that that's those are some powerful words scary too yeah, they're a little scary because <laughs> it is are. an experience being it is. a parent. It is. So tell us about your experience, Claire. Well, um, I say when God deals with me, he has to carry a two-by-four and a boatload of patience <laughs> because I don't always agree with him the first time. And so during a lot of my big life events, he has had to kind of gently steer me into accepting what his plan was yes. and for example I didn't get married till I was 29 and a half which at my age was an old maid we weren't we went through infertility weren't able to get pregnant mm -hmm. adopted two beautiful children and then I thought okay I'm a stay-at-home mom everything's wonderful we got these kids in Awana they're just gonna grow up and be strong Christians go to the University of Georgia everything's gonna be perfect and then we found out that our son had severe dyslexia and learning disabilities. Wow. And like a lot of parents that find out that there's something not quite what they expected about their child, first of all, they're in denial. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I, like I do in every crisis, I, I always usually start out by telling God he's crazy and that he needs <laughs> to do it my way. And, and, I, and I always wind up doing it his way. So um, 
that was a tough experience. But then when our daughter was a teenager, she really struggled with the abandonment issues that go along with being adopted. Yes. And so she acted out in some ways that really forced us to deal with that. Yes. And at that time, you know, you mentioned making a choice. Yes. God had really prepared us ahead of time. He had brought a gentleman into our lives who sat us down right before that time and said, I wish I had known that I should go after their hearts instead of their behavior. Yes. So when she started mm -hmm. acting out, um, we had a, a decision. Were yes. we going to go after their hearts or their behavior? Yes. And we chose their hearts. Yes. So eventually at 16, she wound up getting pregnant. And um, I went through just the greatest response to all of that. I gained weight. I got depressed. <laughs> I was mad at God. I was withdrew from all my friends. I would never look at Facebook because everybody else had this perfect post, and I'm judging my inside against their outside. Yeah. And, um, and so I was mad at my daughter because she wasn't um, going to be what I wanted her to be. Mm -hmm. and eventually you know we I had to make that decision and my husband and I just clung to God and each other yes. and um, we decided no we're not going to kick her out we're going to go after her heart yes. and um, the most incredible thing happened we had found out that her birth mom was a heroin addict yes. in Chicago in the ghetto and there had we had tried to meet her and it wasn't working because where do you take your 14 year old to a ghetto in Chicago that it's kind of safe, and it's yes. not. So when Callie was five months pregnant, we got a call that her birth mom was in the ICU. Mm. She had had an overdose, and they were getting ready to pull the plug. And if Callie was ever going to meet her, we needed to drive up there. So we drove 12 hours through a blizzard to meet her for 10 minutes in a drug-induced coma. And while we were there, Callie's birth family sat her down and said, this rejection that you've had mm -hmm. since you found her, forget the abandonment, has not been about you. It's been about her because she's so embarrassed and she's an addict and addicts aren't their normal self. Right. They just never are. Right. And so later that night, um, you could just see there was a, a piece starting to come over Callie that hadn't been there in years. Mm -hmm. And later that night, Callie had to go into the hospital. So it was Friday the 13th. It was, <laughs> there, they take Callie off in this ambulance and they say, we're going to drive down the interstate, yeah. but you drive down this other road. And don't worry that the hospital, it's got barbed wire around the parking lot and you'll be okay because there's a guard. And I mean, we're driving into a rough part of Chicago. So we get there and I'm making big deals with God. I'm like, okay, God, we got junk all over the back of the car. There's nobody in this parking lot to help me across. It's dark. And I did grab her laptop because I, and what we needed for the night. And I'm just made big deals. I said, God, I don't care what they do to the car. Just get me in the hospital alive. So he did. And miraculously, nothing was stolen. And we drove home and my husband said to Callie Tuesday night, he said, you know, there just, we were remarking that there was just this peace because she'd had this huge hole in her heart yes. that I had wanted to fill. I wanted yes. to be her real mommy the yes. whole time. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And she would call her birth mom her real mom. And she said to her daddy, she said, you know, I was sitting in the hospital. I was hurting. I was mad. I was, you know, fussing at mama. And I was worried about my real birth mom across town. And she said, I realized that my real mom was in the room with me. And that was a huge gift because a lot of adoptive parents never get that gift. Mm -hmm. So um, as time has gone on and we've had some things with Porter and everything, we've really been set free of judging and condemning ourselves and judging other parents. Yeah. Because you think about it, you know, for me, my two biggies were, was she going to get pregnant and was she going to get a tattoo? And I was going to be humiliated over both of those. Well, they both happened. So yeah. now what do I do? Wow. And what do I do about what other parents and what other people think of me? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I did the worst thing I could. I got angry 
and judged and condemned my friends because I thought that they would judge me. Yes. Now, if they had, they would have judged me for something that was actually happening. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm sitting here judging and condemning them for something that they hadn't even done. Wow. So I have learned through this, um, and it's been not easy yes. because I am very strong willed. And I've learned that, you know, if you have a Christian kid that grows up in a great family mm -hmm. and they just stay on that same path, mm -hmm. praise God. Yes. And we do joke that they haven't had the full mm -hmm. parenting experience, but praise God. Yes. You know what? But if they don't, yes. and if you find out that so-and-so's kid smoked pot or so-and-so's kid smoked cigarettes or so-and-so's kid got pregnant, you know what? I've been freed from, the, from feeling like I had to judge them. Yes. And because I've been freed from feeling like I had to judge them, I could pray with them. Yes. I could be with them and I could do what I do when I'm speaking, which is offer a, a cup of cold water to them yes. and just say, you know what? Yes. You need to look at yourself how God looks at you. Yes. You need to have his perspective. Mm -hmm. So I looked at Sarah. I looked at the Hall of Fame and Faith in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked at Sarah and Abraham. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to look at the woman. And it was either Sarah or Rahab. And Rahab had about three verses. And Sarah had a bunch. So I looked at her. And both she and Abraham, they didn't get it multiple times. So I'm like, you know what? You're not the bad a thousand with God to be in his Hall of Fame. Yes. And then I looked at David. I mean, after God's own heart. Yes. And boy, did he mess up with his children. Yes. So I learned um, some of David's words. My salvation is utterly dependent on yes. you. Yes. And nothing he ever did was good enough. So David could be whiny with God. Mm -hmm. He could be angry with God. He could rejoice with God. Yes. He could be triumphant. Yes. And it didn't matter because in the end, everything was utterly dependent on God and yes. not David yes. and so I just you know have been set free yes. from trying to measure up to being good enough exactly you know that's, that's it's very powerful um, that you would say that um, you know being free from judging other oh. other parents yes uh, because whether we realize it or not that's something that parents do because we take responsibility without you know, cognizantly right. uh, noticing that we're doing that. Right. Uh, if your child is not doing this, then um, then then my child is better than your child, oh. and, and and so on and so on. Or how could they do that? They came from a Christian home. Right. This, that, and the other, and we feel the weight of of our children. We feel right. the responsibility because right. as parents, we have the responsibility exactly. for their welfare, their right. total being, their emotional state, their right. spiritual state, their physical state, their financial state, their whole being. Exactly. And so we take that responsibility on. But I want to go back to, um, because I, I really felt when you were talking about, um, you know, the infertility mm -hmm. and not being able to have mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. um, um, I really felt that, that there was some women out there that, oh. that that maybe are not able to bear children, um, but you didn't stop at being, you know, not, you didn't stop at settling just, I'm not fertile, so I'm, I just don't want to have children right. and live a selfish life. Right. You chose to adopt. Right. How was that process for you? That was a very interesting process. We got to the point where we wanted to be parents more than we wanted to be pregnant. So I have some friends that have gone through infertility for 19 years, and I have never said to them, hey, you ought to stop. Because you know what? I had a friend after 20 years that got pregnant with in vitro. After 20 years, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't ever say you should do this or you should do that. but. It, it, infertility is so painful. Yes. Um, we were in this newlywed class. Almost everybody was in their early 30s. Oh, they were all getting pregnant the first month they tried. That doesn't happen statistically in the population. Yes. Jeff and I got to where we didn't want to go to church on Sunday mornings because everybody was going to make an announcement about how they got pregnant that was going to start off mm -hmm. about a gallbladder surgery for Aunt Martha and mm -hmm. in the end wind up being a pregnancy announcement and we just couldn't handle the pain anymore and we learned things like 
It's okay to give yourself permission not to go to the hospital to see someone. It's okay to give yourself permission on Mother's Day not to go to church if it's just too painful. Yeah. And the biggest way we learned that, one of our dear friends um, in our small group, we had just finally told them that we were going through infertility. She had her baby. Jeff said, you need to go to the hospital. And I just knew. I knew I didn't need to go. Yeah, so, so let, let, let's, I mean, you, you were saying so much here. Right. Um, because basically, just even the thought of someone else being able to give life. Right. And you weren't able to oh. give it brought pain to oh. you. Dev and so you know what I did? One of my most fine, embarrassing moments. What you do? I went to the hospital. I walked in the door. Terry and her mother were there with her beautiful baby. I said, hello, Terry. And I walked straight to the window. And I stood with my back to them and looked out the window the whole time. And they were so <laughs> gracious. They would ask me questions. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you yes. want to hold the baby? No, that's OK. And I'm just looking out the window at the street. And inside, I'm going, you idiot. Why would you do this? Why would you, why would you, your sweet, dear friend, why would you stand there with your back to her? Yes. And she just loved me enough yes. and um, celebrated when our babies came along. Yes. But that's how painful it is that a rational person will walk into a hospital and stand with their back to their friends and look out the window for five minutes and turn around and leave. Yes. You know what? I just want to take this moment there because I really feel uh, in the spirit that there is someone who's dealing with this same issue right now. And, you know, God has really been dealing with you about adopting a child. Yes. You know, you it might, it's still your child. Oh, yes. If you adopt that child and you take, even, you know, though I'm a birth mother. Right. Right. I'm still just a steward over my children. Exactly. So if, if God wants to, you know, desires to give you stewardship over a child, then go that route. You oh, still yes. are a parent. Yes. And I'm telling you, you're going to be the best blessing to that child that that child could ever, ever have. You have been chosen for that child. Go get it. And that child is going to bless you more. Yes. You and know? then I want to touch, too, when you said uh, about choosing are you going to choose the heart of the child or the behavior? Tell us a little bit about well, that. Well, you know, I have a master's degree. I was an athletic trainer. They're the people that run out on the football field when somebody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. So at age 26, Children's Healthcare, which was then Scottish Rite, hired me, a, a, a younger than me physical therapist and a 30-year-old doctor to start the sports medicine program, the one you see on billboards and commercials. Wow. They hired us to start that. It yes. had not been done, I don't think, in another children's hospital in the country. Yes. So I started and ran that for till the kids came home. My husband's a dentist. We're very academic. I was just positive that we were going to have kids that were academically good enough to go to the University of Georgia yes. and everything else. And then they didn't come along that way. And maybe that wasn't their plan. Yes. And maybe every kid's not cut out to go to college. Yes. And um, so we had to deal with that and, and really had to deal with whose expectations are these anyway? Yes. Whose plan do you want this to be anyway? Yours or God's, yes. you know? Yes. So, um, so that's what that's what we had to do and and it was difficult because you know we are academic we did have those expectations yes. and as event after event after event happened i mean i went i made plan b c d e f all the way through the alphabet yes. and finally got to the point where i was able to say you know what god whatever it is yes. whatever it is i still I would not trade my Cali Joe or Porter D for the world, for 57 that I could have birthed my way. Yeah. You know what? I wouldn't. Yes. You know, um, that brings me to a scripture um, that I often uh, just sort of rest in, and that's Psalms 89. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in, in, the book, uh, in the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 89, and it says that, and, and God is talking to David, he says that the covenant that I have with you, mm -hmm. I also have with your seed. Exactly. And if your seed transgress, right. he said, I'll visit his transgressions with right. the rod. Right. But nevertheless, will I take away my loving kindness right. from him. And so that's the uh, rest and peace that we have as parents, exactly. knowing that if our children go away in which exactly. we don't think that they should go, exactly. God is going to visit them, mm -hmm. not with a judgmental eye, mm -hmm. but with his, with his loving kindness and his tender mercies. Well, it has been so great. So. Tell us, great having you here. Thank you. Um, but tell us your experience as a parent. Um, 
What would you say to parents that may be watching tonight to encourage them in their parenting that they might have children that are not going the way that they think? Well, I would say always go after their hearts. Yes. Always, God is faithful. Yeah. He meant it when he said, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. We had an 80-year-old yeah. woman baptized at our church who, when she was old, she did not depart <laughs> from it. So if it takes till they're 80, you know what? He is able. He is faithful. I would say if you're going through a time and you think all your friends are judging you, yeah. they're not. They just want to love you, reach out to you. If you're going through depression, and like, the, I mean, yes. I did some horrible things. I didn't shower for two weeks at a time because of depression. Yes. If you're going through that, let your friends reach out to you. Yes. And I would say as parents, you are free from having to judge other parents when their kids do something less than perfect. And hear me, I don't think teen pregnancy is a great idea. I don't think smoking pot is a great idea. Yes. But I love my children more than I love them not smoking pot. Wow. So are you traveling around the country speaking I do to speaking, parents? And so yes. And, How can um, people reach you? Through the RobinsonAgency.com. Give us that. The T-H-E with mm -hmm. a capital T. Robinson is capitalized. Agency is capitalized. Dot com. Wow. So, thank you, Claire. It's been you. a uh, awesome uh, pleasure having you here. I have enjoyed it. And thank, thank you so much so for the opportunity. Much. Well, we're going to go back over to the music set where Miss Deborah Brown is going to sing Love looking for love too.